Today we're gonna to talk a little bit about sump pumps. You know, it's the spring season here in Kansas City, and so we happen to get a lot of calls about water in basements and sump pumps and failing sump pumps. And, and so what, what we wanna talk about today are some of the areas of what you get for your money and what are some of the common fail points in sump pumps. So, so you can make a better consideration if uh, you are considering a replacement or an installation of a sump pump in your basement. A sump pump can go in any type of basement, whether you have a, a, a slab foundation, rock walls like we're standing in here today, block walls or concrete walls. A sump pump can definitely help collect water when the groundwater is raising and get that water away from the house and out and keep your basement dry or the area that you're trying to protect dry. But when you're trying to decide that from a homeowner's perspective, you got hundreds of options out there. You got uh, anywhere from a quarter horse sump pump, just a real small sump pump up to a full horsepower. You got lots of options you can stick on those sump pumps. Each of them have their, their, their variables and uses. And so you as a homeowner can make the best choice for what you're using. From Casey Pierce's perspective, we always recommend to probably over engineer it a little bit in a sense that you're trying to protect your, what is many times your lifetime's biggest investment is your home. Especially if you have finished space in your basement, living space in your basement, you'll wanna make sure you have a good sump pump with the right options to make sure that you're protected for the long run. During the seasons in need, you know, the sump pump doesn't run every day, hopefully. It shouldn't run every day, but it will run seasonally. And when it is running, you can feel confident, or when it's required to run, you can feel confident that it's gonna respond and do the job that it's gonna do. So I would recommend many times uh, spending a, a, at least a three quarters horse sump pump. You can get lower and less, but at least a three quarters horse sump pump is one that's gonna produce about in, in, in a time of need, you know, 3,300 gallons per, per hour if need be to constant exposure. If you're trying to protect living space, put a backup, battery backup on that sump pump so if the power goes down, you can ensure that you'll have uh, a few hours of, of performance on that sump pump until electricity can be recovered. Uh, if you're in a rock foundation like we're standing in here uh, right now, out here in Brookside, with rock foundations, we, we always would recommend a grinder pump, something that if it's gonna get exposed to a lot of uh, uh, material that may clog that sump pump, a grinder pump will grind that up and sediment, make it smaller. So ultimately when the pump does turn on to pump it out, that sediment goes out along with the water. Those are items that will help protect whatever you're trying to protect in your basement. Common fail points of sump pumps is A, power. Just make sure it has power. That's where the battery backup can be in place if need be. Uh, we install our, all of our sump pumps here at KC Pier with battery backups, but that's the most common point of failure is, is, is power. So having that place, uh, that piece in, in place that'll provide power when needed is definitely important. Making sure your basin stays clean because they will clog up or the floats will get stuck. You know, a sump pump will actually trigger when the water reaches and that float goes up and reaches a point of intolerance to get that water out of there. So keeping that basin clean, making sure that that, that float can move freely. You wanna check that at least seasonally, you know, two, three times a year to make sure when it's needed to operate that that float goes up and ultimately gets the water out. That's always an important piece. If you do have a grinder pump on there, check to make sure that there's no sediment sitting on that, that sump pump so ultimately it, it can grind that up and get that uh, sediment and the water out of there as well. And then making sure that your sump pump area stays clean to keep the sediment out of there. So if you're, if you're in living space, you know, sometimes do you have a cover on that sump pump? Some of them don't have covers or they lose their covers over time. You wanna ensure that that cover stays on there or you have some type of cover so things don't end up you know, falling into that sump pump that can clog your lines, cancel the electricity, cause it to overheat, and ultimately plug the time when the water needs to get out, it won't be able to get out of there. So common sense items is power, cleaning, and maintaining a, a proper float on a sump pump are always great ideas and things you can do seasonally to ensure that your sump pump will turn on at exactly the time that you need it most. Hard work, work.
Hard work.